Okay, so the church is God approved. Okay, now if we think of something as being God approved, it means that if God says it, uh, who can stand against it? It's kind of like if God turned off the sun, who's going to restart it? Who are you going to go to? You're going to go to your president? You're going to go to the UN? Who's going to restart the sun if he turned it off? Matter of fact, who's going to strike the match? How far away would you have to be to do that, uh, to strike the match? You know, that's a mission where you, you where you're flying out there to, to into space to 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 reignite a ball of gas that will you know an explosion that you couldn't even imagine you know that's a that's a suicide mission that's uh hey I'm kissing my family goodbye they they're never gonna see me again you know no one could restrike the match to start the sun if God decided to turn it off likewise if God decided to pull all the water out of the earth who's gonna put it back if God decided to crush it and grind it up in the dust, who's going to change his mind? Who's going to be able to reform it? Who are you going to go to? So many times as people, we get so um, used to the things that are here and established as a baseline, and, 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 and we don't understand that it came from somewhere. Someone had to put it into place, into being, and, and whatnot. Okay, So the same person who put it in place, established it, and, and gave us the baseline to understand it and whatnot, he is also the same one who approves and disapproves. He is the judge. He is the ultimate authority. You know, the one who made it is also in charge of it. Okay. Now you can receive uh, the word of God. You can receive the authority of God, or you can deny it. Two choices. You either believe God and trust him at his word, you accept his authority, and you and you get in line with him, or you don't. Now, here's the reason why this is important for the church being God approved. Right here in Matthew chapter 28, um, verses 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to deserve all, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Okay, that's also taught in Mark. Here's Mark's gospel. Um, and, Jesus, and he said unto them, meaning Jesus, Mark, this is Mark chapter 16, beginning at verse 15. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The gospel is the good news of the kingdom of God, that there is a king and he's in charge. Okay, not just the good news of salvation, the good news of the kingdom. Okay, and we're going to talk about the kingdom because the kingdom and the church go together as well. All right. Uh, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth, believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. OK, so here um, we have the authority to tell people that there is a true God to worship because God gave us the authority. It's God approved. This message is God approved. He's not running for campaign. He's just telling you this message is God approved. The, the church, the, it, without the message, there is no purpose for the church. The church and the, me the message, the message is. And the church go together as, as part of the harvest and everything. We're going to talk about this later. but And so he said, the authority behind everything, the, the supreme authority, God said, go into all the world. So who can tell you not to go? Okay. Man can try and tell you. They can stop you. They can hurt you. They can harm you. They may even kill you. But the bottom line is they don't have the authority to deny the word of God. 
And anything we lose in doing the will and the word of God is to our gain anyway. God is not trying to save our life on this side. This is further teachings later on. But the bottom line is, um, uh, this is a God-approved message. Go into all the world teaching about me. That you have to come to me. That you have to get saved through me. It doesn't matter what anyone else wants to teach. No one else has the authority to change the message, okay? Likewise, he said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. You have to believe, confess with your mouth, and get baptized. Baptism is a, is a critical part of your salvation. If you, if you believe in Jesus, but you have not been immersed in water, you have not uh, uh, been baptized, I'm going to tell you, you're missing out on, on, on a critical part of your salvation because it's very important, and we do it in obedience, Okay? Uh, and we can't be saved without obedience. I know this part is you know, it's taking a little longer than I normally want to go on these videos, but this is some points that we need to make. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Okay? Um, you know, by default, if you don't believe in Jesus, you are going to hell. All right? Um and these signs shall follow them that believe. Now, this is, these are signs that go with the church. In my name, they shall cast out devils. Now, the only one who has the ability to cast out a demon is, is, a, is a believer indwelled by the Holy Spirit. Because uh, the devil rules the earth currently from the government, the leaders and, and whatnot. They all worship the devil. And, uh, and they do devilish things. And so... And then people are indwelled by demons, okay? But the only one who can kick a demon out is, is someone who's indwelt by God's Holy Spirit because God's kingdom is stronger than the kingdom of the devil, which we talked about before when we talked about the gates of hell. Uh, it's there, there are two rival kingdoms at battle here, okay? Uh, they shall cast out demons. Um, in my name, they shall cast out devils and they shall speak with new tongues. Tongues is a controversy. Uh, bottom line, the Lord promises it. Okay. Uh, they shall take up serpents. Okay. Now, you, you have to understand uh, the devil and his demons are The devil is represented as a serpent. Okay. There's all kinds of evil, evil schemes. You know, I'm not sure how many ways the Lord means this, but just taking it literally as in serpents. You know, not that we're going out trying to handle serpents and snakes and all that stuff. It's, it's that. You know the deadly poison of serpents and 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 the evil schemes of both the the, the demons and people who serve the devil. Uh, they they can't harm us. They may do us physical harm. Okay. However, if by the Lord's will you're bitten and uh, you know uh, and your faith is strong, you know uh, the Lord may deliver you from that. Okay. Uh, and they sh and shall drink any deadly thing. Now now this is you know take up serpents drinking deadly things. There's a lot of people who are un, uh, attacked by Satan through people and everything else uh, to keep from preaching the word of God. OK, but what we have to understand is, you know, uh, our job is not to determine the outcome. Our job is to be obedient during the trial. OK, just be obedient during the trial. Leave the results up to God. OK. Uh, and they shall, lay, shall, they shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Now, uh, and it says, these signs shall follow those who believe. Now, when we talk about laying hands on the sick and they shall recover, that means we, God has given us victory over disease. Okay. The God, God has given the church victory over so many things. Um, uh, and these are all a manifestation of the kingdom, which is, is the gospel is of the kingdom, you know, that has come. It's the gospel of the kingdom that, that not only, because if you're talking about a kingdom that automatically implies that there is a king and the king is Jesus. Okay. And so when we preach the gospel, what we're doing is we're, we are standing in agreement with the word of God and we're, and we're saying what he would have us to say because he is in authority. OK, and whether we're faithful or not, God is still faithful. He established the earth by his faith. He built the church by his faith. He, you know, uh, we have uh, rain and harvest time and all this other stuff because of his faith. OK, and so uh, and and the same one who established it all. 
he's the only one who can destroy it. And so if he approves the church, there's no one else who can stand against it. Okay, let's go to the next part.